Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. It's so lovely to see you around these parts again. Today's video I am very excited about. I've been wanting to talk about it for a very long time. Today we are talking about Tailwind. I feel like we need to have like some wind rustling past to kind of give that uh, evocation of speed. Uh, the question to answer today is, what is Tailwind? And also why I think you should be excited about Tailwind and maybe use it in your next project. It's not a free thing that you can just start picking up immediately and start using. There is a learning curve, but after having played with it for a couple of months now, I feel pretty confident in saying that it is a very worthwhile investment. So let's get down to the meat of it. What is Tailwind? At its simplest, most unhelpful explanation, it is a CSS framework. Thanks for watching. See you next week. No, I'm kidding. Uh, Tailwind is a CSS framework the way that uh, Rails is a application framework. That's actually a horrible metaphor. Um, it provides a lot, and by a lot, I actually mean all styling that you may need to style an application. And the thing that's important to understand about how it does that is the way in which it does that. Tailwind's API is a collection of CSS class names. It follows the methodology called Atomic CSS. Um, they also call it Utility CSS. But what it boils down to is that per each discrete style that you could apply on a page, there is a, a discrete Tailwind class name. So checking out its web page, you have here these classes like Flex, uh, PT4, Tech Center. Um, you could pretty much guess what Tech Center does if you inspect it in the browser. The only styling applied to that class name is text align center. And that is both uh, the strength of Tailwind and also its learning curve, is having to learn all these class names. Uh, Atomic CSS has been around for a while. Uh, this is a new article I'm sure that's been bumped up since Tailwind's gained more popularity. I mean, this is from, this is what, last week? And, but there's, Atomic CSS has been around for a long time. Yeah, here's an article from 2016. Uh, Atomic CSS is not a new concept, but Tailwind kind of takes it up a notch and makes an entire design language around the API of Atomic CSS. Now, you may be thinking, okay, that's fine. We've had CSS frameworks around for a long time. I mean, what about Bootstrap? It's been around since pretty much the dawn of the internet. So why is Tailwind so much better than Bootstrap? <laughs> I'm so glad you asked. First things first, Bootstrap's kind of in a weird uh, space, mostly just due to historical reasons, but Bootstrap is kind of a hybrid CSS framework and component library. Uh, I would actually argue that when it started off, it was much more so a component library. When I was researching this video, it seems like Bootstrap's actually trying to shift more towards being a CSS framework as well, because um, when I was looking at the docs, they actually have a huge array of CSS utility files that did not exist when I was first learning Bootstrap versions one, two, three. So it's glad, I'm, it's exciting to see them moving to be more modern, but again, uh, they're kind of weighed down, I would argue in some ways, by just the legacy and history of Bootstrap itself. But thinking about Bootstrap as a component library means that when you use Bootstrap components, you're thinking on a component basis. So what that means is that you're thinking about buttons, you're thinking about dropdowns, you're thinking about nav bars as individual things that you're using from Bootstrap. This is in uh, contrast to Tailwind when you're thinking about spacing. So for example, how far away should things be from each other? Colors, as a very like basic, like here's a palette of colors and the shades that are possible. You're thinking about um, box sizing, but not like a unique box sizing combination of things, literally just like, do you want box sizing border box or box sizing in content box? Uh, or if you want to do z-index, there's a finite list of classes to set z-indexes for elements on your page. And what that kind of gives you by thinking more on a lower building block basis with Tailwind is much more flexibility and much more control over what your application looks like. 
Again, Bootstrap is just components. So you have, so when you use a Bootstrap button, it will always, always look like a Bootstrap button unless you customize it, but who's customizing Bootstrap themes nowadays? If you want to have a Tailwind button, you kind of got to build it yourself. For example, here, this other example on the website, they have this buy now button. And that's actually, if you look here, it says buy now. That's being backed by this long list of Tailwind class names, which if you've never seen Tailwind before, this looks ridiculous. And I was there in your camp as well, because at first glance, it does look ridiculous, but that is really the strength of Tailwind. Looking ridiculous, no, I'm kidding, uh, being flexible. But I mean, what Tailwind does provide for you, aside from just, you know, rather than having to write uh, justify center here than in just your own custom class name is it has strong default styles. Um, when you install bootstrap, I believe that's still the case. They have a initial CSS that kind of resets how things look. So they actually have a consistent baseline to apply bootstrap styles on top. Uh, Tailwind does the same thing with this thing called preflight. It's an opinionated set of base styles for Tailwind projects. Bootstrap has its own as well. I can't find it, but I think it does as well. Um, what's interesting about Tailwind's approach with preflight is that rather than actually setting default styles to like H1 elements, let me find that. We do uh, components, H1, here we go. Uh, rather than customizing uh, how H1s are on the page to have them just look like bootstrap tailwind's pre-flight actually strips most styles by default so that essentially every browser that you see tailwind in has the same baseline which is nothing at all like if you install uh, tailwind and you put h1 through h6 on the page they all have the same size it's weird but it's also powerful because then you can start applying class names on top it also means that it's easier to extract a tailwind project because you've applied the class names you want whereas with bootstrap when you have these default styles that are global, it becomes very hard to understand where they are. But ultimately what Tailwind gives you with these collections of crazy class names is strong default styles that are made by somebody who has a better design sense than me. Uh, so what does that mean? Is that, for example, they provide out of the box a wonderful color palette, which yeah, you could do yourself, but it's built in. That's one thing, but also it has uh, consistent spacing for everything, um, which means that there's a whole design token language that works together. Now, this is something if you worked in a big company, you you might have been familiar with it. So, for example, with text size or font size, there's a given number of classes to to apply font sizes, but they are all in proportion to each other which means that you don't have a small class name to a large class name making a big jump. There's a gradual progression. Uh, they all work in harmony with each other. So that means that if you do use Tailwind class styles together correctly, they usually end up looking nice on the page, uh, which I am in such strong need of. Also, frankly, it doesn't make the page. No two Tailwind projects will by default look the same. It's very easy to tell when a project is, is using Bootstrap. And frankly, at this age of the internet, it pains me to see a Bootstrap web application. It's just, it's a little just like, it's it's old, it's, it's past dated. I, I definitely understand why and like, do not blame anybody for using it because I've definitely done it in the past. But at this time, if I'm trying to make something that I own, I don't want it to just look like Bootstrap. And that's the real strength of Tailwind is that it actually has just, a vanilla toolkit that you can use to make your own house. Um, so the analogy here is Bootstrap gives you rooms pre-made, gives you a bedroom, gives you a kitchen, and you can put them in different configurations, but like you still know that's a Bootstrap kitchen, that's a Bootstrap bedroom. Uh, Tailwind, on the other hand, gives you the individual pieces. They give you, it gives you a Tailwind doorknob, gives you a Tailwind coat of paint, it gives you a Tailwind Floor, and you can kind of combine these into any combination to make your own Harry's Kitchen, which is the name of my new album coming out this fall, full of peanut butter and jelly. Okay, enough about what Tailwind is and how it works. I think you kind of have the theory strong enough at this point. Uh, let me jump into a demo to kind of show you how I've applied Tailwind uh, to an application that I've built. 
Uh, there's this thing I made called Vody Uppy. It's a way for people to vote on video ideas they want me to make for this video. Uh, I have another video about it, so if you want to hear about it more, check out that video link down below. Um, but I used Tailwind for this project. This is an entirely Tailwind back project. And I want to kind of give you a tour of like how I've used Tailwind to make this awesome. Uh, before I jump in though, one thing that I may say, must say is that uh, a Tailwind is hard to learn because there's all these esoteric class names you have to learn. Uh, I've memorized some, some I haven't. Uh, Tailwind does have a nice, you know, quick search so I can look for, for example, spacing uh, to see, uh, to quickly jump to a page for documentation, but that's actually pretty disruptive when I'm actually coding. So instead, like all good developer tools, there's additional developer tools to make my developer tools better. Uh, and that's in the way of this uh, VS Code plugin called Tailwind CSS IntelliSense that kind of gives you a drop down to give, it gives you both autocomplete and shows you what the class name does so you can understand what you're doing to the page. Uh, it's invaluable both to learn Tailwind, but also just to develop Tailwind. Like it's, if you're trying out Tailwind and you're using VS Code, install this extension, you'll have a much happier time when learning Tailwind. So first thing I want to show you is a very simple example is the uh, about page here. So I have this about page, has a profile over here. And if you see over here, uh, some of the class names are, you know, more or less intuitive and some aren't. Uh, like this is flex. So if I hover over it with my IntelliSense, you can see it says display flex. This MB4 is confusing, but if I hover over it, I see that it's margin bottom. Uh, there's all these MB4. If I go here, I can actually show you how um, there's, there are conventions to these class names. So here is there's M0 for no margin. Margin two is the token size of 0.5 uh, relative EM. And it goes all the way bottom. So there's margin for all rounds. There's negative margin. There's margin Y. So if you want to set margins at the top and bottom, the Y axis, that's MY. Uh, MX is left and right here, margin left and right for MX2. Then there's uh, M... Blah, 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 blah. MT, M top, MB. So this is MB4, but because of my IntelliSense, I can just see that it's MB4. So that's nice and easy. Um, also, what's cool is I can change the, so, that, so if I want to, I could delete this, do control space to load up IntelliSense and actually go through and inspect all different sizes that are possible. So I can hit MB10, save it, auto updates there. Um, also, I can experiment with text sizes to see what size I want this heading to be. Uh, I can say text size 7XL and save that super big. So very clean. It's a very simple example. Uh, let me show you something that's a little also neat about Tailwind is the way that it does. Uh, it's, they're called modifiers is what I think it, it's called. Um, so I have here this card component, which controls essentially the layout for each of these individual items. And if you when I hover over this, I don't know if you can tell there's a slight shadow that happens in the bottom here. Do you see that right there? Slight little shadow. The way that's done in Tailwind. Also, before I go any further, I'm only using Tailwind for this entire project. I had no need for custom class names at all. And Tailwind was able to provide any styling needs, any CSS needs by itself, which is phenomenal. It can do that. But in this case, there's this hover shadow large X. Um, so shadow, so shadow large is a standalone class name box shadow. You can see here it's shadow large, right? It just applies the, this box shadow. But this hover prefix is a convention that's used across Tailwind that essentially does, you know, colon hover on the element so that when this element is hovered, then apply these styles. And it provides some built-in modifiers by default. You can extend Tailwind to choose which modifiers to use. But in this case, I can actually go here and let's just delete the size and go to 2XL. Let me save that. And now when I hover, look at that, it's much bigger. If I go back to here, shadow, let's do, and if I just delete it, then if I hover over it, you see there's no modifier there. There's no, there's no box shadow at all. What's also cool is they have some nice utilities as well, which I thought I would need to use uh, my own CSS to do this, but I actually don't. Um, I have this item list. You can see there's space in between each of these. That's actually controlled here by this space Y5. So if I do space, space between, this whole page to control the space between child elements, which is a super common thing that people do. And the fact that it's built into Tailwind just kind of shows the maturity of the framework itself. So here I could actually go here. Let's make this obscene. Let's do 28. 
yeah, there you go. A huge space between each item. So the, every item will have that space between them, nice and simple. And then uh, last but not least, it's honestly harder to author Tailwind than it usually is to read it. So in this example, this is the item component that is c controlling all of this. But if you just like kind of glance at this, you should be able to read most of it by and large. Like here's display Flexbox, Flex Row, Justify Start. Oh, here's that MR, it's margin right to have on the right hand side here. Border, uh, what is this? Border right width. That is not intuitive, I would say, but can't have every class name be so. Border purple 100. Uh, text, um, there's the modifiers when you hover over here. You can see that animation, that transition. You have here transition colors, duration 150 to make it change. So it's all these things that it, it's actually not that hard to read when you actually get into it. Now, switching back to the card example, um, I made this into a React component to make it easily reusable. Uh, it's literally just a div with children, and I just put the common class names in here. But let's say you don't want to do that. Let's say you actually want to make your own custom CSS class theme. Uh, you can do that with Tailwind if you wanted to. Uh, it's not really encouraged, but if you want to make your own um, custom CSS components for buttons and stuff like that, you can extract in component classes with apply. Uh, it's using, I think this uses uh, uh, less uh, to actually do the styling and it uses a custom directive to essentially say that um, here's a new class name that I created apply these Tailwind class names to it to make all those styles built into this class name so that's Tailwind in a nutshell it's weird especially if you've never done utility atomic CSS before it's weird I'm not gonna deny that but for making for, for making and designing your own applications to make them look like your own and not look like an off the shelf implementation, it's pretty much the best option out there. I think in some ways it's making me a better designer because I know all the styles that are there have been approved by somebody who has a better eye than me about design. So as I use them, I'm kind of building up my intuition on why things look the best way they do. Uh, it's still possible to make something ugly with Tailwind, no doubt about that, but it definitely helps provide a nice little, you know, area of safety where it's easier to succeed than it is to fail. I've been enjoying it. Uh, the learning curve is real, but if you can push through it, if you use the documentation page, if you use uh, the IntelliSense plugin, it makes it a lot easier to do so. And also the more you practice, the easier it becomes. So I do recommend Tailwind. It's not a free tool to just get up and going. There is a learning curve, but it's pretty cool, especially if you want to just not, if you want me to make your sites and applications look pretty. That's the video for this week. Hope you enjoyed. Uh, if you are not already a subscriber, become one for more videos like this. There's a lot of them that I have now. It's been a lot of videos, so I'm excited to share that knowledge with all of you. I will see you again next week. Stay happy, stay coding.